Hello, you're very welcome once again to another episode of Paul Plays Shenzhen IO. And the puzzle we're doing for this episode is token based payment kiosk. Now, exciting times. Um, in the email that was sent just before this puzzle, we get secret hidden commands. So, I'll just go over them quickly by knocking one of these on. So it was talking about, there's two commands that weren't in the English translation for the manual. So that seems strange because they've put so much lovely effort in the manual and to have it sort of <laughs> not complete. So you, anyway, whatever, it's it's part of the game, I suppose. So the first command that hasn't, that they've introduced that we haven't seen before is gen. And what you do, oh, no, it's not gonna work for that. So let's do just a normal one is you do gen a pin, not an X pin, a normal pin, the time to stay on and the time to stay off. And what that translates to is the following four lines of code. Move 100 to P1, uh, SL sleep for two, move zero to P1, and sleep one. So basically just, just to, so when you put this gen line in your program, this is in effect what you get instead of it. So that P1 is here and here. So that's the pin you're talking about. The two is this, the number, the, the number of cycles, the hundred or on state stays on for. And the second, this one here is the number of cycles, the off state stays on for. And the other command that they were talking about is an at sign. You can prefix a statement with an at sign, and that means it can be run only once. And it says use it for initialization code, that type of thing. So, two new things not in the manual, but are available and probably going to be useful on this one, I would imagine. So, let's find out. Right, get rid of that. Now, let's have a quick look at the puzzle we are doing. Right, token-based payment kiosk. So what basically it is, it's 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 in a sort of coin-operated machine. Um, you can get signals coming in for the coins being put in. There are items in it which have a price, and it needs to be able to give change and ring a bell. So these are the single, a simple inputs, clicks for mechanism that accepts and detects one five and 12 tokens the bell this is here is triggered is a simple output character solid that rings the bell when triggered so let's have a quick look at that so here's the bell output here so it isn't we're not actually having to ring it it doesn't it's just goes on and it seems to go on for four cycles out one and out five are simple outputs connected to a mechanism that, that dispenses one and five unit tokens as change after a sufficient number of coins have been inserted, the payment kiosk should ring the bell and dispense the change. The cost of the item is set by the operator using a switch that can be read on the X plus input. So that is here. So what we need to do basically is count up how much money the user has put in by adding these. Once it gets to or above 16, we need to ring this bell for four cycles and also do change. Now, if we look down here at how the change works, the bell starts ringing. We need to give out the fives first and then the ones, but with a gap between each one. So the change is pulse. There's the pulse for five. Um, there's the pulse for, for the one. So if we look at what's happening, say, in this first example, the user puts in a 12 and nothing happens. A second 12 goes in, which means they're at 24. We can see here the price, which we can't set, but has been set to 16. So in theory, so as soon as that goes in the second 12, the bell is turned on here for four. They get the, so we owe them eight. Yes, so they get a five and three ones to make their change in eight and we're all done. Right, <coughs> oh, excuse me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, just going to, you know, rough this out quickly. If we had something there, something there. 
So let's say this guy's job or Chip's job is to decide when Okay, this guy's job is going to be to give out change. So let's presume in our head that it gets a message saying give out a number of change. 3, 6, 11, whatever. So it gets a message on its X bus to say give out change. This guy's job is going to be to... to handle the amount of money the user or has put in, ring the bell when there's enough, calculate and tell, say how much change this fellow here needs to do. I mean, we need some way of getting it in. It already has the one P here, so we've got three pins. So what I'm gonna try and do is, if I put, something like, So what I'm going to do here, and I haven't done this before, is I've got two of, so two of these guys connected, and they're both going to use this one X bus. Because if we look at this, we can see here are two 12s coming in. Here's three ones, followed by a five, followed by a one, and there's a 12. Um... We never get two different coins on the same input. So we're getting we're getting either a one, a five, or a twelve in on each cycle. And never even like straight away, it never goes with a one and then a five the cycle after it. There's always a nice gap. I'm not sure that matters, but anyway. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is convert these pins into XBus signals. So to do that, we need to move. Okay, test of equal. P0 and 100. Is the P0 pin set? If it is set, move. That's 1 to X1. And... Test of equal. No, sorry, that's wrong. Test of equal. P1 is the one pin. Test of equal. P0 and 100. Move 5 to X1 and sleep for one cycle. This one's simpler. Move. No, just test. What am I doing? Test of equal. P0. 100 plus move 12 to x1 and sleep for one. Right, so again, quite simple. Just checking to see what's coming in on these, if these pins are on, and if so, generating a message on this bus. And so either this chip is generating a message, this chip is generating a message, or nothing is. So let's just try and get, say, the bell ringing done. Right, so in our head, in this chip, accumulator has got the amount that the user has currently stuck in the machine in it. So we're just going to wait. Nothing can happen. Sleep until we get something on the X bus. Add, so that's going to be an amount. So we're sending either a 1, a 5, or a 12. So I'm just going to add that straight to the accumulator. Um, add x1 to the accumulator. No, you don't need to do that, do you? You just need to add x1, like so. So I need to know, have we got 16 or more? 
So we don't have a greater than or equal to, but we do have a less than. So test less than. So is the accumulator less than x0, which is the price? If it is, we haven't got anything yet. So we just need to go back to the start. So I'll put a label S there for start. And do that. So when we come here, accumulator has a value in it greater than um, greater than the price that's been set here. So we can now use one of these gen instructions to do the P1. So gen P1, we want it on for four cycles, um, off for one maybe, or zero. Oh, for one, I'm not sure it matters. We'll see. And now we need to clear the accumulator, move zero to the accumulator, and I believe we're done. So hopefully this will eat up all the things that are happening on the X bus, and we'll ring this bell the four times it's needed. Or not. Obviously, we need a plus there because that should only be moving a five when we find a hundred. Yeah, and that looks pretty, pretty good from where we're at at the moment. So what I was trying to do then is just get this line so we can see down here on this in the verification output, the bell is now being rung the four times. Now, obviously, we aren't generating any change yet. So, to calculate the change, move zero to the accumulator. So instead of moving zero to the accumulator, we need to subtract the current price from, we know we're greater than or more than it, so subtract x0. And, okay, if it's zero, we don't need to do the change thing technically, so there's always that. But let's just do it. We'll make, we'll make sure this change box can handle zero change, and then we can maybe have a look at it at the end to see which is more efficient. Um, probably six of one, half a dozen of the other, but who knows? So we're going to subtract from x0 and move accumulator. Let's press tab here. That's X3 there. Right. And then we drop back up there and we're going to be sleeping again. So, oh, hang on. Although what we don't want to do, we don't want to wait for this gen command to have finished. So technically what I need to do is do control X on that. do that and actually tell you what I do need to do I do need to I still have the change amount in the accumulator so I will need to blank that out so move zero to the accumulator yes so that I still need to blank the accumulator because otherwise I'd be leaving it with, with whatever 16 in it from last time right so this guy is waiting to make change so sleep um, on what pin is that that's x0 and then where are we going from here? So the first thing we need to do is decide, do we need to get how many fives we need to give out? So we need to move X zero to the accumulator. Now, do we have, I suppose the first question is, do we have more than five? So five or more, so we want to check if we've got five or greater. So there's no test greater than or equal to, so we need to test less than. So is the accumulator less than five? It 
If it's not, so that's a minus sign, what do we need to do? We need to give out five. Now, how do we do that? We need to do this pin out thing. And again, we can use this gen command to make that a bit simpler. Gen P1, 1, 1. So that'll put it on and wait for the cycle. It's off. And again, we only want to do this if it's less than five. We need to, sorry, test. Well, if it's greater than or equal to them, we can subtract five from the accumulator and jump back up to, let's call it C5 for check for five. Put a label here, C5. Right, so what this is doing again is it's, we want to know is there more greater than or equal to five in change to be given, in which case we have to give it a five. In theory, we could give two fives. If we had to give 10 change, that would be two fives. So we need to keep doing this until, or we could, we could give it on any number, I suppose then. No, we can't give 12. So if the price goes up, well, whatever. Okay. We can only give five. So we're going to keep giving fives whilst there's more than five. So when we get to here, we need to like check for one maybe. Do we have greater than zero? So yeah, so I didn't need to do test less than like that. I could have done, let's just make this a bit clearer, I think. TGT, test greater than accumulator four put these on pluses ah this is just pointless I know but it makes it easier so do we have more than four in case we have five or more so do we have more than zero so test greater than accumulator zero do we have so now we do this we get rid of any fives by staying in this loop doing the pulse if we do we need to gen p0 this time one one we subtract one from it. And again, that should only be done on the plus. And then we need to jump to C1. And it looks like it's making change quite well. Brilliant. Right, so that's running. Fantastic. So what do we need to do now well just quickly before we finish or before i finish this episode there's one question here about this where do we want to check for zero here so let's just let's just simulate this again So we are power usage 515. Now, if, for example, we did, if, for example, instead of always sending it out for change, we said test if equal, ACC is zero. So if it's 
if it's zero, only send out the change if it's not zero. Turns out it's slightly worse, 520. So basically it's so rarely zero that the extra, extra cost of doing this test every time we do this outweighs the few times we've actually had to send zero for it to here and it to run a few instructions that it didn't need. So who'd have thought? Right, let's get rid of that then. Um, test equal. Now the other thing, which I might have a look at quick doing quickly, just to finish this off, is this at the start. Can it be done? I mean, at the moment that these cost three each, and I'd like to try doing it with one of these instead. And one of these. So let's quickly throw these away. Let's add this in. I have to flip him around. So if you remember what this does, this means an Xbus can query this. I'm going to keep it going the same way as I had before. So I'm going to put one of... In fact, it could just be... It doesn't matter. These two are both three and I only need... I only need um yeah I only need two X inputs so what what happens here is we query this and we get a number back one zero zero and because we know from these inputs we can never get like one zero one we know that that the way this input is pulsed to us that we never get two coins on the one cycle so what we need to do and because it's one of these buses we can keep constantly rereading it so we can do test of equal x1 and one and if it is move we know that say the one to x3 test of equal x1 with 10 move 5 to x3 test of equal x1 Test of equal x1 to test of equal x1 and 100. 5 to x3. That's it, 1. And that hasn't worked at all, has it? So why has that not worked? Let's step through it. So here we send a 5 across, Z1. 
second five. And we have ten. Ah, right, for some reason we are wrong here, aren't we? These are 12s. Okay, I'm not quite sure what's happening here. I don't see how I got... No. Look at it. Right, I'm an idiot. much better. So we've managed to get rid of um, a big chunk of that input, simplified it a bit. Now the next thing is look, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is only using one P1 and two X's. But it's got 10 lines of code. So if we could get one line of code, we could use an MC4000 there. This one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is only using eight lines of code, but unfortunately, we're using three X buses for it. Um, so we'd have to figure out some other way of doing that. But again, I, I just want to you know, go through these puzzles roughly and do it. So that is this puzzle. Um, it is token-based payment kiosk. Again, we saw the two new instructions, especially this new gen instruction. I didn't actually end up using those ats. So maybe, you know, maybe I should have. <laughs> Um, possibly there was there's, there's some opportunity for using them for an for initialization code, but I didn't. So that's that. Um, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do drop a like on the video. I'm going to keep going with this game until it beats me or I beat it, whichever comes sooner or faster or whatever. Um, if you have any comments, if you um, then please do drop one on the on the videos. But until next time that I'm doing another one of these by now.